This is Investment Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Daily live streaming interactive featuring Mrs. Backup. Subscribe, hit the notification, smash the likes. Now, here's Backup Brad Kimes. Come on in. What's up, everybody out there in the XRP community? Thanks for coming back to Investment Perspectives. I'm Bradley Kimes. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley. Let me show you the tag above my head here. Follow me on Twitter if you'd like to connect and keep up with the news. Let's get right into this thing. There's a few things I want to talk about today. The fundamentals that affect XRP price and crypto in general. Uh, this is the stuff that's really, really important to me day to day that I follow when it comes to my investments and the things that I hold in my portfolio. Let's take a look at some of the current events that are happening out here that I consider to be fundamentals in the marketplace. This one came from Michael Val Five Links, a representative at the international money transfer company Flash FX says it will likely launch Ripple's XRP powered payment product called On Demand Liquidity ODL in Japan in the first quarter of 2020. Let's take a look at this article and you can follow Michael. You should follow him. Val Five Links, he's amazing. Thank you, Michael. SBI mulling a company wide cryptocurrency shareholder payout. In XRP, <clears throat> Japanese financial giant SBI, which is an, a, an early investor in Ripple, is considering issuing Ripple XRP tokens as company-wide shareholder rewards, says the company's CEO, Yoshitaka Katao, in a recent address to shareholders shared by the company on YouTube. Katao stated that a previous XRP handout to shareholders of SBI's Morningstar subsidiary in August this year had proved a success. The CEO said he is looking into a deal of offering XRP benefits to all SBI shareholders at the end of the current financial year of March 2020. And Katal uh, is a Ripple board member, as we know, and SBI is arguably Ripple's closest East Asian partner. The two companies co-operate the SBI Ripple Asia payment platform the SBI chief said that the August XRP payout had driven up subscriptions to the company's Japanese crypto exchange, SBI BC Trade. As Morningstar shareholder wishing to claim their XRP were obliged to open accounts on the platform to claim their tokens. However, Katao hinted that if SBI does go ahead with XRP payout, XRP payout, shareholders will be able to choose whether or not they would like to receive their benefits in cryptocurrency. Katal also made other announcements regarding SBI's cryptocurrency-related business plans. With more materials shared online, SBI subsidiary, SBI Crypto, will begin operations at two new mining facilities before the end of the uh, fiscal year 2019, with, uh, with farms opening in the United States and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, another farm will close down and move elsewhere, meaning the company will end the financial year with four overseas farms in operations. Katal also suggested that the SBI was looking to cooperate with CryptoKeen Yahoo Japan on possible cryptocurrency-related projects. The companies have already begun working together on Forex trading-related business operations. That's huge. The SBI, uh, SBI said in October that SBI VC Trade and SBI Crypto are both making money for the company. The exchange business... Uh, has posted pre-tax profits of 30 million USD, with SBI Crypto posting pre-tax profits of 2.7 million, despite a 17% increase in the group's overall financial performance. In November, SBI Holdings entered another crypto business by investing in major U.S.-based security token platform Securitize. That's another thing to keep your eyes on. So that's what's happening there. Let's go to the next piece. And I want to share this too. Uh, shout out to Bank XRP. Uh, Imager raises $20 million from X Ripple CTO's micropayment startup. So let's take a look at that real quick next too. These, this is great stuff, guys. This is great stuff. So here we go. Now, right here we see in addition to the funding... 
Imager has agreed to build Coil into its platform, which receives 300 million monthly users to provide micropayments to users who view content, according to a report from TechCrunch. The partnership will also be marked by a forthcoming premium Imager membership with exclusive features and content for Coil subscribers. A $5 per month Coil subscription funds creators per second that the subscriber spends consuming their content at a rate of $0.36 per hour. Imager began in 2009 as a gift to the Internet. Over the last 10 years, we've built one of the largest, most positive online communities based on our core value to give more than we take. Alan Schaff, founder of CEO of Imager, has said in a press statement, Coil's technology will open a new opportunities for users to give one another support to the community in new ways. Coil was found last year by Stephen Thomas, the former chief technology, technology officer of Ripple Labs, as a means to pay creators for their labor. Its subscription service is now in open beta, and it provides extensions for Chrome and Firefox. Comparable to Spotify, Coil's web monetization API automatically pays creators in XRP based on usage while the users enjoy the flat subscription fee. Thomas will join Imager's board. Imager previously received $40 million Series A from Andresen Horowitz and Reddit. Coil Invest stems from Ripple Labs Spring Initiative, which aims to fund proliferate of the Ripple XRP ecosystem. Imager received U.S. dollars in the funding deal. Guys, uh, th this is the kind of fundamentals I am really looking to see when it comes to adoption of something I'm holding in my portfolio. Successful business models that are already in place that are looking to add the cryptocurrency XRP to pay out, right, to the content creators on their platform to be able to get them paid immediately, quickly, right? And offer a much more seamless, ubiquitous experience for not only the end user, but for the content creators that are working on the platform itself. This is what I call a win-win at the end of the day. This is definitely the kind of fundamentals I'm looking to see when it comes to how does the XRP price move at some point, right? Which I know is a question we all want to answer. Now, there is a nice little post here. Obviously, if you don't follow Danielle DiMartino Booth or Rainbow, you're making a huge mistake. I would follow both of them. Daniel, Danielle DiMartino Booth is a former Fed Reserve employee, and she has her own, uh, I think it's Quill, uh, I think it's Quill Investments or Quill uh, Consulting, whatever it is there. She's doing her own thing now and does an amazing, amazing oversight and breakdown of the Fed and the economy in the current dire situation that keeps developing out here as far as the global economy and the liquidity crisis that won't go away for banks and it someday very soon, whether we like it or not, is going to be on the doorstep of every single consumer. So that's something that isn't the best news, but it's also a very, very real fundamental. Shout out to Roger Veer. I love this comment right here. The technology and user experience that first made Bitcoin popular is called Bitcoin Cash today. What a comment. I really do agree with it because Bitcoin started out as something that you were going to use and spend and, and as a currency that people would absolutely use. And it slipped its way as it failed it to do so and maintain that, that watermark for itself. It has slipped into what people now refer to as a digital store of value or refer to as digital cold, gold in a store of value. But if you look at Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash is doing exactly what he said. It's replacing Bitcoin in that, in that uh, role. Because if you look around the rest of the world and you look into areas of Europe and you look into the Asian market, Bitcoin Cash is being moved into the point of sale system in many, many places as well as ATM machines alike. So 
Very, very real comment. Shout out to Roger Veer on that. That's great stuff. Shout out to uh, Digital Asset Investor, just because I see him in the, in the thread here. How can you not shout him out? Okay. So, uh, El Crypto King reminds us of a cool article here. This is pretty cool, and I think I actually have this open. Let me see if I can find this really quickly. Uh, maybe I didn't and forgot to open it up. So, this is cool. Uh, this is a situation, uh, no, 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 I did read this. We did cover this, right? Yeah. Yep, offering the shareholders. We did cover that, so I had that open. We covered it. Okay, great. So we got that out of the way. Thank you to El Crypto King for that. Um, Matthew Lini, follow him on Twitter. Great source of information. Here's a great video. I'm not going to play this today because I did it on my live stream, but Christine Lagarde, courtesy of Darren Moore, follow Darren Moore, XRP Darren, Follow him on Twitter. I'm telling you, amazing stuff coming from that guy. XRP Crypto, well, shout out to you. Now, here's something that I like to look at as regulatory fundamentals. Let's get into this. Thank you to XRP Crypto Wolf. Okay, look at this. This just came out today. Top U.S. financial regulators urge monitoring of digital assets and stable coins. Now, Let's get into this a little bit. A panel of top U.S. financial regulators, including Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, urged the federal and state officials to monitor risk from digital assets like Bitcoin. The recommendation came in the annual report published Wednesday that the Financial Stability Oversight Committee, FSOC, set up after 2008 to help identify emerging risks that could trigger a new banking crisis. The panel also includes U.S. Securities Exchange Commission, Jay Clayton, Commodities Future Trading Commission Chair Heath Tarver. The council recommends that the federal and state regulators continue to examine risks to the financial system posed by the new emerging use of digital assets distributed ledger technologies, the report said. U.S. lawmakers and administration officials, including Mnuchin and President Trump, have warned that the risk of financial system and cryptocurrencies and stablecoins like Facebook proposed Libra, but some former officials, including uh, ex-crypto dad CFTC chair Christopher Giancarlo, have pub pushed for a faster adoption of blockchains, arguing that the country could fall behind other countries as fast-moving technology develops. According to the new report, the risk of existing and planned digital asset arrangements could put financial industry stability in peril via both direct and indirect connections with banking services, financial markets, and financial intermediaries. The report also cited, check this out, risk to consumers, investors, businesses associated with potential losses, or instability in market prices. Now listen along with illicit financial risks, risk to national security, cybersecurity, and privacy risks, and risk to international monetary and payment system integrity. Whoa! Whoa! Mnuchin said, January 2018, that FSOC had formed a working group focused on crypto, and the council earlier said the use of decentralized ledgers to store data raised challenges for regulators used to centralized systems. Okay, so here, here now in the stream a couple days, in our live, live stream a couple days ago, Cryptopolis really put it the best way that you could say it. You can't legislate what you can't define. I offer you this before we wrap. When you see here written, the report also cited, and all these lists of concerns, instability in marketplaces, consumer, investor, business risk, potential losses, illicit financial risk, national security, cybersecurity, privacy risk, risk to the international monetary payment system integrity. They're about to define what digital assets are, and they're about to classify what digital assets fall into, because we know that all virtual currencies are to be regulated as commodities by a federal judge by the CFTC. So the truth is, in my eyes, what I'm reading here and what I'm seeing is quite simply this. If you can't legislate what you can't define, 
I can tell you right now that they are absolutely in a position to define it now because they are defining the actual risks that could potentially take place because of the use of digital assets and virtual currencies. All right, guys, this is Investment Perspectives. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. <laughs> this is for educational purposes only. Hit the like and subscribe. And don't remember, don't forget, remember, we do a live stream also. Tune in to our live streams and let us know what you think of these new pre-recorded videos that we're going to be offering here on the channel. If you like them, we'll keep them going. Leave a comment down below and let's keep this conversation moving, guys. A lot of fundamentals moving towards crypto, opening up as a market as a whole, as well as XRP. Exciting times for all of us. Take care. Catch you on the next one.